Well, we just saw Blade Runner 2049, and on this show I take my friends, we go see a movie, we review it here in the car, and then we have a discussion. This review video is spoiler-free, so if you're on the fence or looking for a recommendation, you can watch this video to find out what we thought without spoilers. And if you don't care about spoilers, or if you go out and see the movie, um, you can also check out the discussion video we'll do after this, uh, where we'll get into more details and spoilers. That'll be called uh, Blade Runner 2049 Movie Discussion with Spoilers. So, obviously this is um, the long-awaited sequel to Blade Runner. Um, it's directed by Denis Villeneuve, not uh, Ridley Scott, um, but Harrison Ford came back for it. Um, Ryan Gosling is the main character. And um, I have not read any reviews. I've only heard that there's been a lot of positive reviews, that people have pretty much universally enjoyed the movie and liked the movie. Um, and again you know this is our non-spoiler review without spoilers or anything I can I can tell you um, in 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 practice or basically why it's getting really good reviews um, Denis Villeneuve has has not made a bad movie <laughs> um, this is his fourth that I've seen um, and it's probably the biggest budget of his movies I think it Probably, they probably spent more on this than they did Arrival. Um, it's, it does a great job of being its own thing, but also kind of picking up the torch from the story. Um, it has some of the same tone, some of the same atmosphere as Blade Runner, um, some of the same pacing, but it's not the same movie, and it's not um, what we would have gotten if Ridley Scott had done another <laughs> Blade Runner um, and to me, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I think I think it it held the first one in high esteem and did a good job of being um, being respectful of what came before. But it's a much more interesting, coherent, um, just more well crafted movie than Blade Runner was, um, and. Blade Runner was, I mean, it famously was critically maligned when it came out. The original version of it, everyone pretty much agrees, was terrible with its voiceover and all that kind of stuff. This movie doesn't have any of those problems. It know what it is. It know what it wants. Knows what it wants to be, um, and it pulls it off very well. Um, I think if you're a fan of the original, you definitely should go and see this. If you're um, if you if you like the concept of Blade Runner, but you didn't much care for the Scott movie, the original movie, I'd still give this a try. I think if you're a sci-fi fan, you'll enjoy it, um, even if you didn't enjoy the first movie. Um, I think it, in a lot of ways, sort of writes that ship <laughs> of what Blade Runner uh, could have been, um, more than trying to emulate what Blade Runner was exactly so um, I enjoyed it um, I would say most people would enjoy it as well um, it was is a very long movie but it didn't feel very long um, even though certain scenes feel really long <laughs> it feels like you're kind of staring at the same thing for a while but the movie sort of lulls you with that and then all of a sudden it's over and you're like oh okay <laughs> like it feels like there should be another hour if there's gonna be three hours of this but you look at your watch and nope you've been there the whole time so mm. what'd you guys think yeah i loved it i was i was blown away i mean uh blade runner um you know that movie the first time i saw it like i hated it and then i watched a director's cut and had some friends of mine <laughs> explain it to me and then i'm like explain, oh, okay explain why it's not terrible <laughs> well that's that's the thing with blade runner I still, I'm torn with that movie. I have a very love-hate relationship with it. I think it's a movie people want it to be something more than it is. I mean, in the end, it's just a guy in a neon-clad post-apocalyptic world in a trench coat who walks around shooting people. That's really all it is. And then they have to put this whole metaphorical thing about, well, what does it mean to be human? And how do you know memories are real? And da-da-da. And, you know, in the end, it's just... Yeah, Harrison Ford walking around shooting people. That's it. Mm -hmm. And this movie, you know, it took that basic concept and just blew it up ten times. Like, it, you know, it 
it focused more, it was actually more of a mystery. He was actually a, a detective doing detective work. Granted, the mystery itself is pretty thin. You'll figure it out, um, you know, halfway through. Uh, but, you know, the fact it focused on that rather than trying, it didn't do what Ridley Scott, in my opinion, is guilty of over and over and over again, where he tries to put all this meaning into it. Like his recent alien movies, Prometheus and Covenant, you know, he ruined the formula because he's like, oh, no, we got to use it to explain where life in the universe came from and all this. I'm like, no, just stick to the concept. And alien yeah. runs around and, and gobbles people up. That's it. It doesn't need to be anything else. Yeah. So the fact that, you know, this director, um, you know, he, he just said, no, no, Ridley, I'll, I'll take this one. And, man, he did such a better job. Like... Like Dale just said, it's what Blade Runner should have been from the beginning, and to see it now, especially on IMAX, I mean, it was just, yeah, I was, you know, two hour and 45 minute movie, but I was captivated the yeah. whole time. Yeah. You feel like you're seeing the movie that mm -hmm. everybody talks about Blade Runner being? Yes, exactly, thank you. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, for all you Blade Runner fans who have a love-hate relationship with the movie, see this, and then it'll be a palate cleanser, and you'll be like, oh, okay, yeah. That's cool. That's interesting. That's what it should have been. I wish really Scott had done this back in 1982. And, uh, well, now here, your your patience with that movie is finally being rewarded. Yeah. And whichever of the seven versions you like the best. <laughs> right. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I, I forget there's a new director's cut every other year. And yeah. I think I saw a handful of them. And I'm just like, oh, what? why do you have to keep redoing this? I hope to God they don't have a director's cut of this movie. Uh, maybe they'll put in a voiceover <laughs> of, oh, with wow. Ryan Gosling. Yeah, and that would, no, they, should do have, they should have Harrison Ford do the voiceover. Yeah, because he <laughs> just for his scenes. <laughs> and if you haven't seen the Blade Runner with the voiceover, Harrison Ford clearly did not. He hated the movie. He didn't want to be there, and his voice uh, captures that. But this time around, though, Harrison Ford is much more enjoyable to watch. Clearly, um, I was some kind of runner. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I like seeing him here versus um, I was not a fan of uh, The Force Awakens. Okay. Honestly, I Harrison Ford there was too hammy. He just showed up and he's like, yeah, I'm Han Solo. You all need to pay attention to me now. And I, I was like, oh, God, this I can't stand this in here. He's more of a morose, you know, old man. And, you know, it's much more realistic given the reality they created. But... Sorry, I liked it. Go see it. Highly recommend it. Yeah, I can agree about the uh, the time length because I, I went into it knowing uh, it's a long movie, you know. And uh, so I, I never looked at my watch because I just kept feeling like, oh, there's going to be a lot more left. But it, And it came towards the end and I was like, whoa, that was two hours, 45? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I don't remember there being a whole lot of action in it, but it apparently didn't need it because it, uh, it kept me glued to the screen pretty much all the way through. Yeah, and it just the way it kind of barrels along. There are those kind of lengthy kind of uh, stuff that's reminiscent of Blade Runner, where it just kind of you stick around a scene for quite some time. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it just kind of flew by for me compared to what I thought it was going to be like. Yeah, the trailer made it look like it was going to be some sci-fi action movie, uh -huh. and it's not at all. No, it has scenes, uh, there's action like, scenes, but yeah, there's a few action sequences in it. Actually, I was gonna. That was another thing. Like the the violence in this movie was pretty brutal. It was brief but brutal. You know, the the other movie, um, the scenes of violence weren't. You know, they had that 1980s cartoonishness about them. But this one is just like, ooh, it's almost like Logan. You know, that movie earlier this year. Yeah, where, I mean, it's. I think the movie's tone is very uh, desperate. Very uh, like nihilistic i mean the whole world has gone to hell and yeah like <laughs> so when there is action like it's brutal and it's yeah well that's another thing um uh, you know this movie unlike the other one much you know the violence is more extreme there's more nudity and there's more swearing than the first one so but it's also 45 if, years what 35 years later yeah so true that's not <laughs> like that's not unheard of for I mean, a movie in 1982. If, True. If a movie in 1982 was as violent as this movie was, it would have gotten an X rating and never, no one would have seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. But 
<laughs> or, or nudity. The nudity would have been too much for it. But um, it's not like, I mean, don't let it sound like we're saying it's in your face or anything like no. that. It's just, it's a hard R rating. Like, don't don't bring your kids to this and expect them to sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. But that's Blade Runner 2049. Um, that's our review. If you like the way we do these, um, stick around and watch the discussion. Um, check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com. And thanks for watching.